Hello everyone and welcome back to SWE's Seasons Beatings. Merry Christmas everyone, I hope you're having a good day and hopefully we can make it that much better here with uh, a cracking show live from Zurich in Switzerland. So we're going to kick things off here this evening with a 10-man over-the-top rope Royal Rumble. This one suggested by Mohammed MZK Punk. This one is a celebration of the life of Jimmy Rave, who, of course, unfortunately was taken from us not too long ago. Um, so this will be an interesting one. Quite a few people that haven't really had a lot of opportunities so far this year to show what they can do. And, of course, um, the main thing is a celebration of Jimmy Rave. We're starting things off with the Necro Butcher and Kid Cash. And there is actually someone in this match I've never heard of before, which is Koji Kanemoto, who must be quite a, um, a niche name because there was only one core for him on the whole community creation. So someone knows who he is, but I'm not that person. So, uh, Mohammed, if, if you do know, let us know um, who this guy is in the comment section down below. Sonjay Dutt is now in this match. I completely forgot about Sonjay Dutt as well. He was someone who was big in the early days of Impact Wrestling. Or TNA, if you will. There's Kid Cash now looking to try and eliminate Sonjay Dutt. Yeah, so um, Jimmy Rave was part of the early days of Impact. And here he is now at number four in this match. Uh, he was part of a tag team with Lance Archer. Or Lance Rock, I think he was at the time, as the Rock and Rave infection. We have had a couple of matches for those suggested as well in the future. Rave also worked quite a lot of Ring of Honor as well, which is probably where he's uh, got these link-ups with a lot of the people in here. As the counter counts down, ready for number five in this match, who is going to be AJ Styles. So AJ Styles enter at number five. This is a good opportunity for people like Styles, because um, he's not that high up in the rankings at the moment, to be honest, AJ Styles. I mean, a good performance here could definitely help him out. Same with the likes of CM Punk as well. Uh, because what we are going to have as part of our uh, New Year's Resolutions pay-per-views, our final pay-per-views of this year, uh, we are going to have a rumble, including the top 30 in the rankings from this year and the top 30 female in the rankings from this year. The winners of both will get opportunities at their championship, so you really want to get in that top 30 if you can. Uh, in this match, I believe Lance Archer's already in there. I think apart from him, oh, Brian Danielson as well is already uh, in there as well. So apart from those two, it's a little bit difficult as Jimmy Rave gets the elimination. Uh, and now Kid Cash looking to try and eliminate AJ Styles. Jimmy Rave looking to help. Here comes Brian Danielson as Jimmy Rave and Kid Cash try and eliminate AJ Styles. AJ able to fight his way back in. Here comes D. Bry, or Bry D, whatever he's called now. Already having a cracking time in uh, AEW, of course. I think he's already had two, maybe three five-star matches, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think he's ever had a five-star match before in WWE. Well, when I say five-star match, I'm talking solely based on the, uh, the Meltzer rating. I don't think he ever had a five-star in WWE. Uh, or even Ring of Honor, to be honest. I think the AEW are the first five-star matches ever had in his career. As Koji Kanemoto in at number eight. This is the man I'm not quite sure who he is, to be honest with you. But uh, a Sanjay Dutt eliminating... Ooh, that could be interesting. Brian Danielson. That could be interesting indeed, because uh, that's going to put Danielson into... A bit of a difficult situation because there's quite a few people on plus five in the rankings and those are the people who are going to have to fight for those last few places in the Rumble. So, uh, yeah, Brian might have just knocked himself out of that Rumble. We'll have to wait and see what happens on that. CM Punk in at number nine. Rocking his long boys.
Kid Cash now trying to eliminate Davy Richards over on the corner. Only two eliminations so far. One for Sanjay Dutt and one for Jimmy Rave. As Koji Kanemoto now looking to try and eliminate AJ Styles. We've got one more entrant left, who I believe is Lance Archer. Kid Cash gets elimination. Removing Davy Richards from the match. We're down to the final seven now. Well, six in the ring, one left to enter. So far, the uh, eliminations have been pretty mixed. One for Rave, one for Cash, one for Dutz, two for Cash. Kid Cash with his second elimination. CM Punk now looking to try and eliminate Sanjay Dutz. There's only um, six left now. So Lion Sarcher's had a great opportunity. He's in a 10-man rumble. He's not even going to see three of them. Of course, Kid Cash has done well here as well. He started at number one. He's the only person to have shared the ring with everybody in this match. Oh, I might be wrong there, actually. Let's not continue with that line of questioning. As Archer straight away looking to try and eliminate Koji Kanemoto. AJ now looking to try and eliminate uh, CM Punk on the far side as well. Oh, I've just realised it was uh, it was Jimmy Rave who Kid Cash eliminated. So Jimmy Rave is out of his own match. However, he did get a point for an elimination as well, so he's still going to stay on zero from this one. So he's still going to sit in the middle of the rankings, not going to drop into the minuses. Kid Cash, nice power slam on CM Punk. As now Punk slowly getting back up to his feet, Kid Cash. Looking in for that butterfly. Oh, underhook pile driver. But CM Punk up on his long boys, back up on his feet. Sanjay Dutt now slamming Archer headfirst into the corner. And Sanjay Dutt, I thought he was going to try and eliminate Archer, but he's not. He's actually going to lock him into the Tree of Woe. Is he thinking coast to coast? It's a ballsy move. A very ballsy move here. Sanjay Dutt coast to coast on Lance Archer. We haven't seen Archer in a while, have we now in uh, AEW? Because since ever since that um, that injury, he sustained against Eddie Kingston. What was that? That was about two or three months ago now. I believe he's okay. Um, nothing. Well, I don't know if it's too serious to be honest, but um, I don't think he was like stretched out or anything. Bit of a stinger, but um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. I'm sure he'll return. And we haven't seen Miro in a long time either. I think the problem with AEW is they're just getting a little bit too um, overstacked at the moment, aren't they? But I think uh, as soon as Rampage goes up to two hours, they're going to have to do that pretty soon, I think. We'll introduce a third weekly two-hour show at this point. They've got so many people, it's going to be doable, isn't it? Asanjay Dutt and Koji Kanemoto working together to try and eliminate Punk, who does hold on. And Punk is able to fight his way back in. AJ now sending Kanemoto into the corner. I think Archer should be fine here no matter what in this match. Yeah, there's no way he's dropping out of the top 30. AJ with a strong forearm right in the face of Kanemoto. As Archer eliminated by Kid Cash. That's Kid Cash's further elimination of the match. Wow, Kid Cash with his further elimination of the match was Lance Archer. Kid Cash has been outstanding tonight. Really has been outstanding. Nice tornado DDT there by Kid Cash on Kanemoto. Cash now bringing Kanemoto back up. There's an uppercut there by Kanemoto. Now dragging Kid Cash along. Drapes him over the middle rope before springing him back into the middle. We're down to the last five in this match now then. Kid Cash is looking stunningly good here. He's trying to get himself in the top 30 by the looks of it. 
If Kid Cash can get a couple of more eliminations and win this match, he will finish in the top 30. Which is immense considering this is his debut. AJ Styles now a Sanjay Dutt up. He's going to powerbomb over the top, isn't he? AJ Styles brutality just powerbomb Sanjay Dutt over the top. Surely it's got to be a Punk or Styles win here. As Kid Cash gets another. Kid Cash, four eliminations. If Kid Cash wins this, he gets in the top 30. That would be outstanding. That would be outstanding by Kid Cash. It really would. And then he'd get an opportunity in that Rumble to fight for the, uh, the chance to become number one contender for the SWE Championship. CM Punk draping Styles across the top and pings him back in. Punk now sending Styles into the corner. And Punk eliminating AJ Styles. So in this match so far, then one elimination for Styles, one for Punk, one for Rave, one for Dutt, and four for Kid Cash. If Kid Cash wins this, he will be in the top 30. He will get to enter that rumble. CM Punk, I don't know where CM Punk is in the grand scheme of the rankings, to be honest. I don't think he's had the best of times. He's had the best of times, and he's had the worst of times. If CM Punk wins this, he'll get in the top 30. It's an important match for the pair of them, really. Whoever wins this is going to secure their position in that rumble. Come on, Punk. I mean, I feel like Kid Cash has done incredibly well here. And he's going to benefit from doing this well anyway. But, um, yeah, I just really want to see Punk in that top 30 just because it makes more sense. But nice clothesline there by Punk taking down Kid Cash. Boot in the gut and now Punk taking Cash up into a pile driver. Punk now with Cash dragging him along to the ropes, but Kid Cash able to fight back. So there is a position in the final 30-man rumble for the winner here. A chance to fight to become number one contender for the SWE champ. Oh my god, Kid Cash has got it. Freaking Kid Cash. How the fuck has he pulled that off? How? Kid Cash in his debut moves up to plus six. He's gained six ranking points in one match and got himself in that 30-man rumble to fight for number one contendership. <coughs> How? How the hell has he done that? That is madness. Absolute pure madness. Kid Cash with the win. Wow. I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say at this point in time. Well done, Cash. Well freaking done. And here we go then, match number two of the evening. This is the finale of the grudge match between the BWO and uh, JBL, we've got the BWO up against JBL and his cabinet members, the Basham Brothers. Right, so without further ado, this is Elimination Table Match. Therefore, all three members of the team have to go through a table um, for this to finish. And for some reason, uh, Hollywood Nova does not seem to have any um, logos. That's fine. Let's just ignore that Hollywood Nova actually exists then. That's probably the best. Just ignore him. If in doubt, just ignore him. It's generally how it works, isn't it? Right. So, of course, this one stems back, if you've not been watching the most recent shows, so, um... It all stems back to real life, really, when... Was it uh, 2005 when WWE did e ECW uh, One Night Stand? And we saw 
Basically, JBL beat the living crap out of um, the Blue Meanie. And it's sort of gone on from there, to be honest. Uh, we've seen several things happen in our universe mode. We've seen the Blue Meanie um, at ringside with New Jack in the match against JBL. And then it just sort of twisted on from there, to be honest. We saw the Blue Meanie interfering in a match and uh, helping JBL actually win by mistake. He helped JBL win against Hangman Page when he got uh, disqualified. Uh, Hangman Page then actually had a rematch inside a, a steel cage, and that was effective. Uh, Hangman Page got his victory. Uh, but from there on, we've seen... Oh, Stevie Richards is out already. Stevie Richards is out. Wow, the cabinet are brutalizing the BWO here. Of course, this will go um, towards their tag team rankings as well, not just their singles rankings. That is a good point. I need to fix my tag team rankings that I messed up. Uh, but yeah, it's gone on and on, really. Um, we saw JBL go one and one against the Blue Meanie, which Orlando Jordan um, interfered in, helping JBL get the win. And now we've got it's basically trying to even the numbers up. Which is not really working out too well, is it really? You can't really even the numbers up because it's down to three on two already here with that early elimination. I don't know which Bash and Brother it was because they look the same. All these white bald men look the same to me, I'm afraid. So I've got no idea actually who it was. But we're down to three on two, which is not good for the Blue Mooney. The Blue Mooney? The Blue Meanie and, uh, and Hollywood Nova. And, of course, still one more big match for you here this evening. We are going to have the Women's Championship defended. We will see Ali defending the Women's Championship against Funda Rosa. Funda Rosa's third opportunity now at this championship. You see the table has been set up and... Oh, the Basham brothers. Oh, this could be bad for Mini. As Nova goes through the table, it's three on one. Oh, Nelly, this is not going to go down well at all. Not going to go down well at all for Meany now, as he's three on one. He's three on one situation here. He's going to be absolutely put out of it here, I reckon. And JBL and the Basham brothers are... Definitely going to do well. Look at that, just slamming Meanie face first into the ring post over and over again. And I mean, they could put him through a table whenever they wanted to, but I think they just want to add insult to injury here, to be honest. All right, here comes one of the Bashams now with a table, slides it into the ring. And of course, this is really important for the Basham brothers as well, because this is a great chance for them to... Elevate themselves up. This might actually be the Basham Brothers' debut in SWE, to be honest. I'm not 100% sure. It's going to help them raise their numbers in the rankings as well. The tag team rankings. Nice fall away slam there by JBL. Just launching Meany across. Now, JBL, he's dumping the table to the outside. He's like, no, no, no. We're not putting him through the table yet. We're going to beat the living daylights out of him first. JBL with the elbow drop. I don't think he quite got as much of it as he wanted there, to be honest. Meanie now up on the top. Yeah, mate, that was never going to work, was it, really? Let's face it, Meanie, that was never going to work. As nice. Wow. Rolling from the top rope there by one of the Bashams. No idea which one. Let's call him Basham A. Good old Billy Basham. Meany now with one of the Basham brothers up on the shoulders. Drops him neck first across the top. But the numbers game is just there straight away. The numbers game is just constantly there. Now JBL taking him up to the top. And JBL looks like he's going to actually drop him. And I mean properly drop him to the outside here. Yep. Well, JBL just killed the Blue Meanie. 
JBL murdered the Blue Meanie. Nice neck breaker there by JBL on the Blue Meanie. Attempted running drop kick there by one of the Bashers, but completely missed. And now Meanie here fighting back. But again, it's just going to be the numbers game, isn't it? Yep. It's just the numbers game is always going to advantage the cabinet here. I really need to sneeze. I've got a cold. It's Christmas Day and I've got a cold. It's terrible. I do apologise then if there's any weird noises. I'm trying my hardest not to sneeze on camera, so I'm waiting for this match to finish. Which it might very well do pretty damn soon as Meanie sent into the corner. And here we go. T-Bone into the corner and the cabinet are victorious over the BWO. Who saw that coming? Good old Team Danny Basham. That was about as one-sided as you could imagine it was going to be. The Basham brothers completely, oh, and JBL completely destroyed the BWO. And like I said, that's good for them in the rankings as well. They're all going to get the plus one. And in the tag team rankings. Let me just double check. I think that might have been the debut of the Basham brothers then. Um... I would tell if they're not even on there. They're not even on the tag team rankings, the Basham brothers, so definitely their debut. Yep, that was their debuts. Oh no, okay. Apparently it's not. Because um, they've got minus one in the singles rankings already. Oh, I might have messed this up somewhere. I'll get that fixed, okay. And here we go then, the main event of the evening, the SWE Women's Championship. The Bunny defends against Fanda Rosa. So the Bunny's actually been the champion now for quite some time. Only actually had four matches in SWE and is the champion. It's crazy, really. But this is a great opportunity for Fanda Rosa. She's already had two championship matches this year. However, she's not done incredibly well from those two championship matches, let's face it. Uh, but this is a big opportunity now. Can she pull it out the bag? I think the, the other two matches she lost, I think, were both against Beth Phoenix at the early part of the year when Beth was... Was Beth our first champion? No, she wasn't. When Kyrie Sane was our first champion, Beth won the belt from... Kyrie Sane then defended it incredibly well. As I say, against um, Thunder Rosa twice. That's when we did the... When we did an AEW special and we also did a... What was the other one we did? An AEW special and we did the Forbidden Door special as well, I think. And you see Thunder Rosa here working on the arm early on. We know she's incredibly good at, um, at utilizing these submission holds. Bit of MMA background there for Thunder Rosa as well. I'm a big fan of Thunder Rosa. I didn't really know much about her until she joined AEW, I must admit. I'd heard the name. I knew she was good from, uh, from reading stuff, but I wasn't aware until I started watching just how actually good she was. Thunder Rosa breaking free from the submission attempt. And the bunny avoiding the kick in the back. It's very back and forth at the moment. These two ladies obviously know each other very, very well. As Thunder Rosa locks her into some sort of package here and slams her down. Face first into the map. Thunder Rosa. In control of this one now. Bunny's in trouble. This could be uh, the end of a championship reign at this point as Mitch and Noko driver. Is that going to be enough? Thunder Rosa drops into the pin for the one. The two. No, only a two count. I thought that was going to be it there for a second, you know. Thunder Rosa now locking in the head scissors on Ali. And again, as I said earlier on, uh, there will also be a women's uh, Royal Rumble where the top 30 women minus the champion will compete in a 30-woman Rumble to get the number one contendership. At the moment, this actually sits perfectly, these rankings. So hopefully 
that will remain the same way. That's front chantry there by Thunder Rosa now. Wow. Just picking up Ali back of the head. That looked pretty brutal. Thunder Rosa now straight into the neck breaker. Big forearm. It's kicked away there by Ali. But Thunder Rosa definitely seems to be the one in charge here. It does seem to be very, very one-sided. Thunder Rosa once again in with that. Oh, reversed. I don't even know what that is. It's like a... It's a bit like a Samoan drop, but face first into the ground instead. Whatever it is, it is effective. But it's not quite effective enough so far. Thunder Rosa still not quite able to get the victory. But now here she is stalking the grounded alley. This is the opportunity. Again, up on the shoulders. Again, Michinoko driver. That's called like the Fire Thunder driver, isn't it? Something like that. Either way, is it effective enough? It is brand new SWE Women's Champion is Thunder Rosa. So I just thought I'd go a bit of Final Fantasy there for a second. Thunder Rosa is your brand new SWE Women's Champion. Ali had a very good run. She's held the belt for quite some time, but it wasn't enough. And, uh, wow, Thunder Rosa is now going to be crowned as our seventh ever SWE Women's Champion, finishing the run of the bunny. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had a great Christmas day. I hope it gets even better for you. I um, hope you all had some good stuff. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, I'm planning an episode every single day at the moment up until the new year. Um, so keep an eye out on the channel. Uh, and then even after the new year, I've got quite a lot planned in with Wrestle Kingdom and that sort of stuff as well. So uh, make sure you keep sticking your suggestions through in the comment section uh, down below. Well, mainly on Discord, to be honest. But the comment section down below is a possibility if you're not part of Discord. And I love you all. Good night. God bless. Auf Wiedersehen. See you next time. Bye-bye.